I think FRQs are really, this is the key to like scoring well on the AP test. The multiple choice is pretty straightforward. You answer the questions, but the, the FRQ is how you get from like a three to a four or a four to a five. Those are like the bonus points that can really bump you up. And so we use this CHUG SODAS acronym. And basically it's just a good reminder of different skills and things that we should be doing when we're writing an FRQ. So the C stands for being concise. We do not need to write pages upon pages for an FRQ. We should be direct and to the point. Handwriting matters. If you are an FRQ grader, you are reading hundreds of FRQs every day when you're grading them. And so if I can't read your handwriting, it's gonna be really difficult to give you a score. So you wanna make sure that you're writing legibly and that you're using pen and following directions. I always highly recommend underlining the words, the, the vocab words that they're giving you, because again, if I'm grading hundreds of FRQs in a day, I might accidentally miss something. And if you underline it, it just draws my attention to the point and it makes it a little bit easier for me to follow along. Anything basically to make sure that you get the points that you deserve. And then with an FRQ, you never write an intro or conclusion. It's a waste of time. Don't do it. You just get right into the content. You should also space out the words. So I would leave a line or two of space between each like term. Again, just because it's easy to see then and it's easier to grade. Always go in the order that the prompt gives you the words. That way, again, you don't miss one. If you go out of order, the reader might miss one. You just want to make sure you're getting the points you deserve. Always define the word. Always apply the word and use synonyms with the word. If the word is something with interference, then don't use the word interference in your answer. Use a synonym for that word. Practice FRQ for this unit. We're gonna go back all the way to the start of the cognition unit, but the prompt says, Jamal and Elsa have finals next week for AP Psychology, English Lit, and Physics. Jamal's first final is on Wednesday, so he begins studying on Sunday. Jamal continues to study each day leading up to finals. Elsa's first final is also on Wednesday. She begins her studying on Tuesday night as she prefers to do all her studying at once so that it is fresh in her mind. Use the following terms to discuss whether each would help or hinder Jamal or Elsa in their preparation for finals. So we've got the words distributed practice, retroactive interference, and mental set. So I'm going to just talk through how I would respond to this prompt. I always just start like this. Distributed practice is spreading out your studying over multiple days and times in order to better remember the material. So that's just a straight up definition. And so instead of saying distributed practice is distributing out your studying, I say spreading out your studying. So I'm using a synonym for distributed. So that's the definition aspect. Now I have to say how I see this applying to the prompt. So I would say Jamal is using distributed practice by studying from Sunday to Tuesday. And so now I've said who's using it. I have to talk about whether this is going to help or hinder Jamal in the studying of his finals. So I would say because this technique is best for retaining information, this will help Jamal in preparation for his exams as he will most likely score higher on his tests. So I'm talking about what the term is, how the term is used in this prompt, Jamal is using it, and then the fact that this will help Jamal in his studying to score higher on his tests. So then I move on to the next term. You can see I left a little bit of a space there. I've underlined the next term. Nothing fancy. I'm going to just jump right into the definition again here. Retroactive interference is when newly learned information interferes with previously learned information, making it hard to remember. 
Okay, so I've defined the term. So in this case, there's really in the prompt nothing that like specifically relates to this. And so that's fine. This definitely happens on the AP test and on FRQs. So you just have to talk about how it could relate to this prompt. So I could say Jamel could be impacted by this if on test day he is trying to remember the formula for we'll say standard deviation which he learned in September but all he can remember is the recently learned formula for the quadratic equation. Therefore, this would hinder him on taking his final exam. So I set up a scenario of how retroactive interference, newly learned info, is impacting his old information. It's getting in the way of him remembering old information. I set up the prompt, and then I talked about whether that would help or hinder him on the final exam. And then the last term, mental set, is a way of thinking about things that has been successful in the past. Therefore, you use it again in the future. That's the definition. And I would say I'm going to apply this to Elsa. In the past, Elsa has had success studying for a test the night before, so she does it again for finals. However, now Elsa's classes are much more difficult. She cannot think of a new approach to studying, therefore she uses her old successful method. This could hinder Elsa because cramming the night before a test leads to less retention of information. So again, I start with a straight definition, nothing fancy. I talk about how Elsa might be affected by this, and then I finally say that it would hinder her and why it would hinder her. And that's really all we need to be doing for FRQs. Um, and basically just making sure you go through each one, underline the terms, define, apply.